Well, that particular video really showing the enormity of what has been done by CBH, in particular when you see those uh, rail cars and the locomotives actually being unloaded here in Western Australia and showcasing as well some of the magnificent scenery around WA. Well, you're going to be in for a special treat today because uh, you're going to have a, a beautiful lunch in the marquee uh, that you've wandered through. Hopefully you've availed yourself already of a cup of coffee. But uh, you may be aware that this is the United Nations International Year for the Cooperative and to help celebrate all the delicious food that you will be uh, tasting after the formal ceremony here today has been provided and produced by local producers here in Western Australia through their various cooperatives. Now, we see a lot of um, celebrity chefs on television nowadays. You can't turn on any of the channels without seeing a cooking program. But we have WA's leading celebrity chef, and he's just over there in that marquee at the moment. I'm talking about Vince Gareffa, who is supplying your lunch and getting it all ready. Vince, how are things looking over there at the moment? Glenn, it's just looking sensational over here. The lovely people from CBH, professional as they are, have insisted that we deal with all the cooperatives in Western Australia. And guess what? We were already doing that for the last 25 years. So we've got the lovely land people, okay? Wamco, great supporters of Western Australia. We've got the amazing sweet of Carnarvon bananas, uh, lovely supporters. We've got the lovely Turkish breads being used with Western Australian grain and flour. We've got the crayfish people involved. We've got all of the local colleges that are training our future chefs and our future waiter and waitresses. And we've got Michael Tamburi doing drinks. Ladies and gentlemen, when I come back to you with the full menu at lunchtime, it is going to be a joy. <laughs> oh, Vince Gareffa, there's no stopping him. I had to look over at the screen, actually, when he started there at giving the plug for lamb. I thought it might have been Sam Kekovich that had uh, run into the marquee. Well, as you would know, if you've had any involvement at all with CBH, CBH is uh, very much at the forefront of occupational safety. And if you just look at the screens now, because CBH's CEO, Dr Andy Crane, who is also the company's chief safety officer, has a few words about safety for us here today. Welcome to Metro Grain Centre. Here at CBH, we take safety personally, and today is no exception. Just as we want our staff to finish work every day safe and sound, so we want the same for you. If there is an emergency today, please follow the directions of those people wearing the fluorescent vests. Other than that, we want you to enjoy your day here at CBH. So there's the message. CBH welcomes you to revitalising rail the cooperative way. We'll have far better equipment and we'll better increase our tonne support and allow the markets to export more grain when the price is right. Watco is out in the zones and we are going to work our damnedest to fulfil the needs of the grower. So I want to say a big thank you from CBH to every single one of you who've been involved in our rail project and brought this to a fantastic point today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Mr. Glenn Mitchell. Yes, time to get into the true formalities here today on what is a very historic day for CBH, the cooperative, and of course everyone involved in uh, the growing of crops and grains, the length and breadth of Western Australia. Today we're going to see how this particular uh, project has unfolded. We'll be hearing some from, from some people who've been very heavily involved in it as well. As you've already seen from the statistics up on the two screens behind me, it's a massive investment, $175 million, 22 specialist built locomotives decked out in the colour scheme and the livery that you can see behind us, 474 uniquely designed wagons, as well as a groundbreaking 10 year partnership with a new above rail operator. Since I left the ABC in the middle of last year, I've had a great opportunity to uh, go around regional Western Australia and do suicide prevention talks. And I was actually up in Three Springs yesterday 
and driving back to Perth, going past Carnama, I saw one of the uh, bright new locomotives parked there outside the silo with the spanking new wagons directly behind it as well. So many of you, as we saw in the Vox Pops earlier today, have already seen some of the rolling stock out and about. Some of the locomotives are still to arrive in Western Australia, but uh, we can guarantee they'll all be here by harvest time later this year. It's now my pleasure to introduce to the stage the Chairman of CBH to formally welcome you all here today. Would you please make welcome Neil Wandell. Good afternoon. Isn't this great day? I don't know, when you see those trains running out through the Avon Valley, I, the first time I saw that video I got excited and I, I thank you, and I'll thank you later very much for coming here today. Uh, welcome to CBH Group Metro Grain Centre, and um, especially to the people who have travelled, especially from our international travellers who have come to Western Australia for the first time, a very warm and hearty welcome for you here today. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge the Minister of Agriculture and Food, the Honourable Terry Redman, who is going to speak a bit later on, Special Minister of State, Gary Gray, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, Minister O'Brien sends his apologies, but um, I, would, I would like to recognise his outstanding support for the rail project, his commitment to the sustainability of the rail grain rail network during his time as Minister of Chancellor, it was very much appreciated. Also welcome to many of our federal and state government representatives here today, including the US Consul General, uh, Alicia Woodward, welcome. I'd also like to take the opportunity to acknowledge Ed McKechnie from Watco Companies in the United States and Jim Griffith, who heads up, who heads up Watco Rail here locally. And you'll be hearing from Ed a bit later on. Also, our very special guest from Watco and Motor Power, who won a staff competition in the States to visit Western Australia. I think it's the first time they've been to Australia and welcome and thank you for coming and helping to celebrate here today. Our international customers, my fellow CBH directors, and Mick Gafer, our longest serving chairman, welcome. Today marks the beginning of a very proud chapter in our history, both for the CBH group and for the growers of Western Australia. We are delighted that the, during the year 2012, the United Nations Year of Cooperatives we can celebrate such a momentous occasion and reflect on what a cooperative can achieve. As Australia's largest cooperative, and I just heard this morning that it's been announced we're the largest cooperative in Australia again for the fifth year in a row, with the sole purpose of creating and returning value to growers, we challenge the status quo, because we believe there is a better outcome to be achieved in the area of rail freight in Western Australia. We have a proud tradition of challenging status quo as a cooperative and creating something quite special. Mick Gafer's vision of building the Kunana Grain Terminal in the, in the 1960s was certainly one of these moments. And this investment in the rail is the next step in our organisation in, in a new era of servicing growers. The current board courageously took the decision late in 2010 to tender the contract for the above rail operations and also to invest 175 million into a fleet of custom divine locomotives and wagons. Two years on and we now stand before what we see behind us today, well and truly on our way of revitalising and passing great benefit back to our growers. From the board, I would like to take this opportunity to thank Andy Crane and his executive team who conceived the rail project and brought it to the board for consideration. And also I'd like a special thank you to the dedicated rail team which involves people from all of CBH's departments. I really think and the board consider it's an amazing outcome to deliver a project of this size in such a timely manner and on budget especially in this current environment. I thank you very much, the rail team, and you all know who are involved. I thank you very much for joining us today and celebrating this achievement 
and uh, I'll take the pleasure to hopefully meet a lot of you later on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Neil. And from uh, the chairman of CBH, let's move to the CEO. You've already heard him, uh, Andy Crane, up on the screen a moment ago. He's actually taken off the bright vest and he's about to come up and uh, have a few words on behalf of CBH. Welcome, ministers and distinguished guests. It takes a team of people sharing a common vision mixed with a good helping of tenacity to make some bold changes to an industry. I truly believe that's what we've done here. Government, industry and the CBH group have joined forces to bring some of the biggest changes to the grain rail industry in decades. Our state and federal government's $350 million investment into rail in 2010 paved the way for us to also invest in building a better future for grain rail transport in WA by purchasing new rolling stock and contracting a new above rail operator. Our locomotives and wagons that we see here today are ready to start their life, working on the network, carting grain to port. Indeed, much of our fleet has already traveled over the tracks to several of our upcountry sites. Motive Power have built us exceptional locomotives that will bring significant productivity benefits now and into the future. We have also started ahead of schedule a 10-year partnership with Rockco Rail. Our two organisations share a common view to put our growers first. Rockco shares the CBH passion to create and return value to growers of Western Australia and they are demonstrating that commitment through some fresh approaches to scheduling, maintenance and logistics, providing us with above rail services for grain that we believe will be unrivaled anywhere in the country. Watco were also instrumental in overseeing the manufacture of the new rolling stock and supporting the expertise and guidance of our rail consultant, Peter Jones from Mitsui Rail. As I've said, we're here to create and return value to growers and this investment will certainly do that and we're going to add real material value. We're going to clear sites faster, we're going to bring more tonnes to port by ra rail, easing congestion and environmental and safety concerns on your upcountry roads. We'll load ships more efficiently, bringing more of the world's buyers to your doorstep to compete for your grain. And most importantly, we'll cut the cost of getting your grain to the market ultimately improving farm gate returns. The productivity savings made from having the most modern, state-of-the-art grain rail equipment in Australia cannot be understated. From the vision to its realisation, our new fleet will change the WA rail landscape. And that vision would not have been possible without the foresight, the resolution and the sheer passion of Colin Tutt and his rail team led by Andrew Menchelli. Colin is our General Manager of Operations and under his guidance, this project has delivered a bold and positive, sustainable way forward for the state's grain transport system. Thank you, Colin. Thank you to your team. You've done a truly outstanding job. So we welcome you here today to celebrate this important milestone in the cooperative's history and to celebrate the value it will create for growers across the state. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Andy. As Andy mentioned, it's a very big collaborative exercise bringing this all together for CBH. And I'd like to welcome to the stage now Mr Ed McKechnie from Watco Companies to say a few words. Um, Ed is actually Watco's Chief Commercial Officer and is visiting from the company's headquarters in the United States. So I actually had a chance to catch up with Ed before the formal proceedings started. And I said, whereabouts in the United States is your particular company based? He said, Pittsburgh. I said, what's the population of Pittsburgh nowadays? He said, oh, 20,000. He said, that's Pittsburgh in Kansas, by the way, not Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. So would you please welcome Mr. Ed McKechnie.
Good afternoon and congratulations to all those in attendance here today. Neil, Andy, Colin, what a great day for CBH. My congratulations and thanks to each of you for your leadership and vision. I also want to recognize our guests from government here today, but especially Minister Simon O'Brien, who I understood sent his regrets, but his hard work when he was Minister for Transport was part of the synergy that allows us to be ce celebrating this success, and we all owe him a debt of gratitude. Also want to welcome U.S. Council General Alicia Woodward, who is representing the U.S. government locally here in, in Perth. By working together with government, CBH, Motive Power, Mitsui, Bradkin, and countless others, we've all created value for the growers of Western Australia. This, makes Australia, this value makes Australian grain more competitive on the world market and creates value all across Western Australia. The Watco team here in WA and around the globe is committed to improve and deliver our customer first service on a daily basis in a way that, that meets and exceeds your expectations. I want to acknowledge Jim Griffiths and his team for their hard work over the last 18 months to create a railroad operation from literally nothing more than Adam's rib. Thank you, Jim. The Watco team has done a superior job and you have the appreciation and admiration of every member from the Watco team around the globe. I also want to acknowledge the CBH rail team. You pushed us, you challenged us, you had a vision that could create immediate value for growers, and we celebrate the results here today. Thank you for everything you have done, and thank you for including us. Finally, my thanks to, the, to our customers, the CBH Board of Directors and the Western Australia Grower, who takes the risk of planting a crop every year and then counts on our team to deliver that product to port. We are grateful for your selection of Watco to be your rail operator, and we look forward to working, for the, working together for generations to come to create value for you every day. Thank you all. Just as Ed goes back, his two sons are with him today, Jackson and Austin. I'd like them just to stand up with their father and just wander out so everyone can see them. These are the two best dressed people at the entire complex today. Their first visit to Western Australia. And uh, Father Ed was telling me that uh, they were feeding a kangaroo the other day and they want to know how they can take one back to Pittsburgh, Kansas. Might be a bit of a problem, boys, but I'm sure Dad can take you to the nearest zoo over there. But uh, it's great to have your company here for this very special day for CBH and the uh, uh, the work of Watco as well in helping getting this all up. Time now to introduce the Special Minister for State, the Honourable Gary Gray, to come forward and say a few words. Gary. Thank you, Glenn. This really is a fantastic day. Uh, I'm the member for Brand and so the Quinana Terminal is in my electorate. And so it's fantastic to be here with one of the fathers of that great piece of infrastructure, or as I've often been fond of thinking of it, a gift from a great generation to a grateful generation. A gift of infrastructure that just keeps providing for our farmers and providing for our export crop. Something that we really appreciate. Now, my family are farming at Dudlikine and farm up at, in the uh, northern part of the wheat belt at Karoo. And so summer after summer, my family and I get out to the wheat belt to have a look at what's going on. And I never had the dream, the thought, the possibility that when I became a representative member of parliament, I'd have a role to play in something as meaningful and magnificent as the joint cooperative investment that has taken place to help make this a reality. It's a tribute to CBH, to all of you who are part of it, not just the biggest cooperative in the country, but in many ways a signature operation that defines what's good about Australia and what's great about our farming community. Glenn, thank you. Thanks very much, Gary. This investment, as uh, several of our speakers have said already, will have a profound effect on the grain growers throughout Western Australia, making the supply chain more efficient and hopefully more profitable as well.
We have with us today the Minister for Agriculture and Food, the Honourable Terry Redmond, and he's going to come up and help us officially launch the fleet. Thanks very much, Glenn. Uh, can I start by acknowledging the Honourable Gary Gray, our Special Minister for State, uh, my parliamentary colleagues, the Honourable uh, Phil Gardner, Member of the Agriculture Region, the Honourable Mia Davies, MLC, Member of the Agriculture Region, to Alicia Hayden, uh, Member for the East Metro Region, uh, to the Honourable Matt Benson, MLC, uh, Member for South West, uh, also to, uh, to Brian, <laughs> also, um, I haven't got you on my list, but uh, you're clearly here in, in force, Member for the Agriculture Region, uh, Chairman of CBH Group, Neil Wandell, uh, Dr Andy Crane, the CEO of the CBH Group, to CBH Directors, and to all members of the farming community sitting here today. You don't often get an occasion where a whole group of people come together, and clearly uh, a, a cooperative such as CBH and how well it's done over time, one of the clear cooperative success stories, is a, and the event that we're celebrating here today, uh, is something that's absolutely worthy of bringing out a big group of the farming community. What's probably not known very much is that Western Australia produces enough food to feed 13 and a half million people. Uh, with a small population as we have, I'm sure that on those carriages sitting behind me, you will be playing your role in feeding all of those people in other parts of the world, uh, which obviously puts something uh, that we do very well in here in Western Australia in perspective. The international competitiveness of the grains industry in Western Australia is underpinned by an efficient and effective supply chain that is supported by excellent infrastructure. CBH's decision to invest $175 million in 574 aluminium purpose-built wagons and 22 locomotives to service the WA grains industry, combined with the state government decision to spend $187.9 million to assist re-sleepering of key rail lines, provides that such excellent infrastructure. Western Australia is the largest grain producing state in the nation with around 40 percent of the share of Australia's production and 50 percent of grain exports from Australia. The grain industry forms a critical part of the agriculture sector in Western Australia with a gross value of production in 11-12 of around five billion dollars, representing 68 percent of the state's gross value of production and value of agricultural exports. The CBH Group, a cooperative owned by Western Australian growers, plays a key role in the supply chain for the grain industry and is a long-time supplier of bulk handling and shiploading services for the vast majority of grain grown here in Western Australia. The ownership of grain wagons and locomotives emphasises a commitment of CBH to lower costs facing growers. As the majority of grain grown in WA is exported to overseas markets, the more we can reduce costs in the supply chain, the better the on-farm return will go to growers and this will in turn ensure more profitable and sustainable sector. CBH Group also plays a pivotal role in ensuring that grain is positioned at port in a timely manner, enabling exporters to load cargoes when ships arrive and subsequently maintaining Western Australia's reputation as a reliable supplier of grain. Deregulation of exports in recent years has added to the complexity of that task with the need to utilise surge capacity to get grain to port more quickly and take advantage of favourable world market conditions as they occur. The increased capacity that will result from the CBH investment in trains and rolling stock will result in a significant improvement in moving grain quickly, efficiently and safely and will assist our capacity to respond to such market conditions. Investment of $175 billion in new train sets clearly demonstrates the confidence that CBH Group has in the future of the Western Australian grains industry. That confidence is so important to us all. The board of CBH has made a courageous decision and one that could be looked on in 10 years time as being a game changer to the industry. The state government has made a significant investment in the grain rail network since the completion of the strategic grain network review in 2009. This led to the announcement in 2010 of $135 million of Commonwealth matched funding that resulted in a total investment in the grain freight network of $352 million over four years. The funding included $187.9 million for resleepering works and rail siding upgrades at the state's most competitive grain freight lines. Additionally, $14.6 million was allocated for a transition assistance package to ensure rail transport remained competitive with road transport while upgrades were occurring 
and until further efficiencies were found. While the grains industry is inevitably faced with challenges as a result of climate variability, the high value of the Australian dollar, the cost price squeeze and slowing productivity growth, there is still an underlying confidence. Through the Department of Agriculture and Food, the government is continually putting in place measures to increase profitability and resilience in the WA grains industry. In 2010, the WA government pledged $30 million as partnership funding to construct the Australian Export Grains Innovation Centre, AGIG. AGIG will be a vibrant hub of science, technology and innovation focused on increasing the com competitiveness of the Australian grains industry through improved productivity and product value in export markets. The world-class centre will be established in Perth involving the WA government and the GRDC. Government's also committed $9 million to the New Genes for Near Environments uh, project based at Meriden and Katanning to enable the evaluation of the world's best GM traits from both public and private research organisations. It's expected that traits for drought stress, frost, nutrient efficiency, disease resistance and grain quality for consumers will be evaluated at those facilities. The facilities located in Meriden and Katanning as they represent the lower and higher rainfall areas of WA and provide contrasting stresses such as drought, temperature, frost and waterlogging. The government and its departments will continue to work closely with grain in, grains industry partners to support the success of the business in this sector. Truly a very important day for CBH, a very important day for the grains industry in Western Australia, an area that we should have and do have a lot of confidence in and I commend the CBH group on their major investment in this rail fleet and hope we have a, a good finish to the season so this wonderful new infrastructure can be utilised to its full potential. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. Now, I'd like to invite Ministers Redmond and Gray, Dr Crane, Mr Wandell and Mr McKechnie to join the US Consul General in Alicia Woodward as they move down towards the locomotives for the official christening here this afternoon. Before we start smashing champagne bottles, though, there's a very lucky person here in the audience. We don't know who you are at the moment, but we're going to invite you down very shortly, in fact, uh, in a moment, to have a, a bit of a peek after the champagne bottles have been broken inside uh, one of the cabins of the locomotives behind me. So I want you to uh, address your faces towards Neil, my uh, cameraman on the right there, and if your face comes up, make your way down here. Come on down, as they say. You're making me seasick, Neil. <laughs> Aha! It looks like we've got two that are going to be coming down. If you'd like to come down, madam, towards uh, the locomotive, bring down the little chap as well. Yeah, both of you can come down, of course. As long as he doesn't drink the champagne, everything should be all right. Speaking of champagne, uh, just as we're waiting for our special guest and son to make their way down to uh, the rolling stock behind me, you'll notice uh, to your left some very well-attired waiting staff. Uh, they are about to come whizzing up uh, amongst the seats here to uh, give you all a glass of champagne because after we do have the official launch behind me, uh, we will be having a toast to what has been an outstanding uh, collaborative job between CBH and many other organisations. To christen the locomotives here today, it is fitting because of the collaborative nature in particular of Watco in the United States and CBH, our own cooperative here in Western Australia, that uh, the christening should be started by the Consul General of the United States. So I would uh, like to ask Mrs Woodward to do the honours to officially launch the new CBH fleet. And fear not, Mrs Woodward, CBH will pay for the dry cleaning bill. <laughs> 
a very exciting project, there's no doubt about that. We've already heard him up on the stage and on the screen today actually telling us about safety, but I'll cross back to Olivia behind me just to find out from the CEO of CBH, Andy Crane, what it feels like now to officially have this project launched. Olivia. So, Andy, how does it feel to finally see the trains officially christened? Just fantastic. I think the speeches have really said it all. Um, but just to see that uh, video of the train coming up the, up the valley is as, is as impressive as seeing them in, in real life. Sometimes uh, us men get excited about cars and turn them into sort of uh, p things of emotion. And today, uh, seeing them in the flesh and also seeing them operated, uh, it brought a tear to my eye. It's brilliant. And did you dodge the, uh, the champagne playing? Uh, just a little bit. I'm, I'm worried that we've done a bit of a disservice to our relations with the Americans, uh, having soaked a consular general in champagne, but we'll do our best to pay the dry cleaning bill. Thank you very much, Andy. Well, let's now look at the journey taken to have these magnificent pieces of equipment ready for hauling grain across the wheat belt. In one of the most significant supply chain investments undertaken by the CBH Group on behalf of growers, 2011 saw the cooperative commence the manufacture of 22 new locomotives and 574 new wagons to provide Western Australian growers with the most modern and efficient grain fleet in Australia. The CBH Group used its country staff's expertise and understanding of rail loading to help them in the design of the wagons, giving them custom features to maximise the tonnes carried each trip. Our staff are excited with the wagons. Um, they've had input into the design. The best thing for them is on site they're loading more tonnes per wagon, which means there's less trains per site, so they can do other jobs. New rail wagons don't have rail cards, um, which is a big safety issue for site staff. Now they don't have to walk down small alleyways putting cards on every wagon. It's all done through the um, tablet and scanner. This year has seen the delivery of this equipment and the beginning of a new era of grain transport on rail. First, rail fleet has been given an identity by your fellow growers and CBH team members, connecting it to the rich history of Western Australian rural life. Each of the 22 locomotives has a name reflective of early rail sidings from around the state. Here's grower Kelvin Price to tell us about the siding serving his community. When CBH called um, notification to name some trains they were buying, I thought of Moodadine, which is on the Finjarra Narragin line. This siding was what my grandfather would have used to bring his produce to the train. Wheat was loaded here from stacks into the trucks with young fellas getting a job to load wheat. And it's a significant situation for the history of the area to be remembered by that train. Well, a very exciting project, you'd have to say, and again, some great vision showcasing what has been a terrific project by CBH to bring this particular uh, group of locomotives and rolling stock to the shores of Australia. Our waiting staff have done a terrific job in a very short space of time. I think everybody uh, pretty much at the moment has a glass of champagne with them. We won't get you to stand, but if you would like to raise your glasses, a toast to this magnificent project from CBH. And remember, of course, don't drink and drive at the uh, end of the day. Time to go back now to uh, Olivia Garnett, who's uh, going to find out with a gentleman from CBH, in fact, from the headquarters in West Perth, a little bit about what actually happens when the locomotives drag the wagons in here. Oh, thank you very much. Just leave the bottle. It's all right. 
don't worry about a glass for me. You're going to find out a little bit more of what actually happens when uh, the grain is delivered here to both the Kewdale site and uh, also what happens down at Quinana. And we'll go to that just in a moment. But before that, uh, we've got Darren McCauley, who's uh, actually one of the drivers, and what a job he's now got. He'll be travelling around Western Australia, around the Wheatbelt area, in absolute luxury. And let's go uh, on board now, loco number 004. And it is the Pantopin, and it is directly over my left shoulder, Olivia. I am here in one of the brand new, comfy, modern looking locos. And if we go into the front cabin here, I am sitting here with Darren, one of the big drivers. So Darren, it looks pretty modern and technical. Can you take us through some of the bits and bobs in front of us? Yeah, well, we've got the, we've got the throttle here and um, we've got the brakes, brake handle here and the, and the engine brake and we've got the computers that tell us everything what's going on on the loco and um, yeah, and the air conditioning is, uh, <laughs> it's not on at the moment, but it's nice in the, when it gets a bit warm. And of course, my favourite part of a train is the hoot hoot, but I'm told it's too loud to buzz it off today. Yeah, yeah, we can, we can give you that. <laughs> so Darren, how do these new locos compare to the old ones? Yeah, no, they're good. They ride well and they're um, nice and quiet and there's no oil leaks or anything, so we're all pretty happy about that. Are you looking forward to your new office in here? Yeah, yeah, no, good, good. We've got the microwave and the fridge and kettle, so yeah, we're all pretty happy about that. It's like a caravan on rail almost. That's right, that's right. Yeah, it's a home away from home, so yeah, no, it's good. Thank you, Darren. We'll head over to our, uh, ooh, we've got a very excited little boy here, Dylan. Hello, Dylan. How are you? Good. What do you think of this brand new train? Good. Yeah, let's speak louder than that. Good. <laughs> and Mum Denise is here. What do you think of this, uh, this new investment by CBH? Oh, it's fantastic. It's the way to go. So, yeah, it's great to see. And for those outside wishing they were in here like you, can you describe the sort of modern comforts in here? Well, I can see the microwave and the fridge and the chair's nice and comfy. So, yeah, as much as it might be lonely, like Darren was just saying, doing the trips, it's, um, yeah, not quite a spacious place to be sitting in. And, Dylan, what sound does a big train make? Um, gee, gee. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's over and out from loco number four. It's back to you, Glenn. Thanks very much, Olivia. So there's uh, Darren McCauley, a current driver and an apprentice who's going to be behind the wheel of one of these trains in a, a decade or two. Well, the benefits, certainly, in regard to this new rail infrastructure coming into Western Australia, courtesy of CBH, is going to be enormous. Uh, you are all welcome, uh, by the way, after the formalities today, to have a closer look at uh, the cabin um, and get to look at uh, the trains behind us. It is interesting. Uh, I went in there before. Uh, they do have the microwave, the kettle, the fridge. Uh, unfortunately, $175 million didn't buy a jacuzzi uh, for each of the drivers, but I'm sure um, they'll be happy nonetheless behind the wheel. But for now, we'd like to show you just what this investment actually means to all the grain growers here in Western Australia. The CBH Group's fleet of 22 locomotives and 574 wagons is set to revitalise rail in Western Australia. The locomotives have more horsepower, providing faster journeys and turnaround times. They're more efficient and productive with distributed power, and the dynamic braking technology allows for better fuel efficiency. The unique aluminium wagon design gives greater loading capacity. They have safer loading and discharge functions and are more efficient to maintain. I think one of the key benefits is that we've got an opportunity for the first time to introduce some new assets, which improves the productivity of grain to port. So, We'll have far better equipment and we'll be able to increase our tonne support and allow the markets to export, export more grain when the price is right. In addition to that, it, it also allows us to reduce freight rates for the growers and, if, and our supply chain is more competitive. Productivity efficiencies from the new equipment, coupled with superior above rail operations from Watco WA Rail, will deliver growers the benefits they deserve from this investment. The assets are here. The train sets are being put together, Watco's out in the zones, and we are going to work our damnedest to fulfill the needs of the growers. So I 
think the um, you trying some grower perspective um, will deliver reduced freight rates. It will allow us to deliver more tonne support so the marketers can export more grain quickly if the price is right. And uh, we put the assets, more of the assets in the supply chain in the growers' hands. So a bit more about the benefits of this terrific new rolling stock and what it will bring to the grain growers around Western Australia. Well, let's find out what happens when the trains actually come in here, pulling the magnificent shiny wagons behind us. Uh, down on the grid at the moment, we've got uh, Olivia again with Andrew Mancelli. Olivia. Shelley from CBH and as what it is known as the grid, which is very much what it is. Um, Andrew, what exactly happens here? Um, well, this is where part of the action happens. This is where the uh, wagons get discharged um, at here at Metro Grain Centre. So the wagons come in along uh, a grid here and um, we push a button and the, and the grain comes out and, and goes into the silos, as you can see behind us. So how is that different from previous ways? Well, just behind the cameraman there is the old air spanner, which... Um, my first job on CBH 18 years ago was to get behind one of those and we've been using that for about 40 or 50 years. Um, some of the older guys in the crowd will probably correct me on that. Um, but yeah, we, we are going to take that down the museum um, and from now on it's uh, pushing buttons to discharge the wagons down here, so it's a fantastic innovation. And you have a very fantastic innovation in your hand here, the famous touchpad. Yeah. Um, can you tell us through what this is used for? So this is, um, this is replacing the, the rail cards that were on, put on the wagons. Again, for, since day dot, we used to put a, a cardboard um, card on each wagon. Um, so it was about time, it's 2012 now, we need to get with the times and the technology. So this records what goes in each wagon and what gets discharged from each wagon and communicates straight into our centralised database what's in each wagon. So it's a, it's a huge technological advancement for our, for our company. And would a major benefit also be safety as well? Absolutely. Uh, we don't have to walk down the, the along the length of the train at 3 o'clock in the morning putting uh, cardboard cards on each wagon anymore. Um, they all get scanned as they get loaded. Um, so that's a huge safety uh, innovation as well for our staff out in the bush. Well, Andrew, at the grid, I think your job just got a whole lot easier. It certainly did. I, I might have to come back and work down here. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andrew. Glenn, it's back to you. Thanks very much, Olivia. Uh, something we didn't find out from Andrew then is that when they're actually waiting for the trains to come in late at night, uh, there's actually Nintendo games that are also <laughs> on that touchpad, so it just keeps them occupied and focused. Well, last year, the CBH group ran a competition amongst the growers and the staff to actually find out what these new trains should be named. They received about 350 entries covering a broad spectrum of topics, including political figures, sporting legends, CBH and the grains industry history, yep, yep. flora, fauna, tourist locations and indigenous culture. Unfortunately, ageing former sports broadcasters didn't get a look in. But a central theme evolved from all the entries. The names taken are from some of the old railway sidings that are located around the state. This theme allows the industry to remember and pay tribute to the history that gave them the opportunity to build such a globally competitive grain industry that we have today. I'd like to invite CBH General Manager of Operations, Colin Tutt, up to the stage because we do have three winning growers from uh, the competition as well as uh, two members of the CBH staff uh, who are with us today. They're going to receive a plaque in regard to uh, their contributions of naming the rail stock. Before we do that, though, if you'd just like to uh, look at the two screens behind me, you will see a rolling uh, presentation of the 22 locomotive names that have been uh, successfully put forward by growers and also members of CBH staff.
So there you go, the names of the 22 locomotives have, uh, they have been devised or put forward to CBH by staff members and also by growers. Um, I'm not sure if we ended up putting them into uh, the gift bags or not, but I know when we had a briefing meeting, we were talking about putting a little competition in there that um, if you could point to where all 22 of those places are on the map, <laughs> you'd actually win a prize, but I don't think we actually got around to that. Or well, Nita's correct entry might have also won. Um, we've got Colin on uh, stage here, such an instrumental part in regard to uh, the formation and development of this particular fleet. As I mentioned, we've got three grain growers with us here today and also two staff members of CBH who put forward names for the 22 locomotives. And if I could ask them to come forward, please, uh, as I announce your name and pick up a, a special commemorative plaque from Colin. The first gentleman is uh, Andrew Borthwick. If you'd like to come down to the stage, Andrew. Andrew has named the 001 CBH locomotive and w w CBH 001, I should say, carries the name Yilly Minning on it. And Andrew is actually a grower from Narragin. Please welcome Andrew Borthwick. <laughs> Kelvin Price also has put forward a name which has been successful. If Kelvin would like to come down and receive his plaque from Colin. He was uh, responsible for the name on CBH 002. Mutadine or Mutadine? Uh, what is it? Mutadine or Mutadine? Mutadine. Thank you. That was Colin that knew that. No one in the audience. I thought you were from the country. Uh, yeah, so Kelvin naming uh, 002 Mutadine, and uh, Kelvin is a grower from West Pingley. Well done, Kelvin. Mark Smith, if you'd like to come down and collect your plaque from Colin as well because uh, Mark put, through, put forward the name for locomotive number 119. He's a grower from the Meriden region and he came up with the name Bandy. 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 I'm doing well. I've travelled to 54 country towns in the last eight months, but I haven't been to any of these. Uh, the next uh, person who's come up with a name well, this is great. This will be one that will test me here, probably. Uh, Rob Burns, if he'd like to come down. He was uh, a very long-standing employee with CBH, and he has named locomotive number 121, and the name that Rob has put forward is Benja Bering. So, uh, well done, Rob. As he said, a long-serving employee with CBH of years past. And just to prove that it isn't only the men that come up with names for locomotives, if Amy Bolton would like to come forward and receive her plaque as well. Because uh, Amy, who is a staff member based here in Perth for CBH, came up with uh, the name for locomotive number 122, Yell Benny. Thank you very much, Colin, and uh, congratulations to uh, each of those five people who helped come up with the names of the 22 locomotives that you'll see uh, zooming around during harvest time. In fact, you'll see them zooming around for virtually 12 months of the year. Well, that pretty much takes us to the end of the official proceedings today, and uh, time very shortly to sample, as we mentioned, some of those delicious cooperative fairs. In recognition, as we mentioned before also, of this being the international year of the cooperative, as according to the United Nations. Today's lamb has been donated exclusively by Wamco. The bananas from the Sweeter Banana Company, or co-op I should say. And thank you to Christopher Pearson who is in the audience today representing the co-op. And the water has been donated kindly by the Harvey Water Cooperative. Thank you very much for joining us here today. Very shortly we'll be going back to Vince Gareffa Please feel free though, as we mentioned, uh, once we close things down here very shortly, to go across to the locomotives, have a peek inside. Uh, keep in mind that it is a very small area, so we'll be channeling people through one or two at a time. Just before we do officially wrap up though, I've started by asking if there are any Fremantle supporters here. Uh, Collingwood are playing the Eagles tomorrow. Any Collingwood supporters here at all? Okay. Um, unfortunately, uh, you'll have to leave without lunch. Um, if you just make your way straight back to your car, sir, and uh, we won't hold it against you. 
Just before we do wrap up though, uh, an event like this takes a lot to put together. And some of the CBH staff you can see uh, decked out in their bright uh, fluoro safety gear have been taking on roles today which is very different from the roles that they normally fulfil. And head office in West Perth also. A lot of people have come together to put this particular project. We'll be hearing from Vince and the waiting staff will be in the main marquee shortly. But can you put your hands together for everyone involved here today in helping launch this great project. Thank you very much for turning out in such large numbers today. Uh, please do enjoy lunch and have a safe trip home. Thank you very much. are jumping because I need you now. We've done all this glorious food. Look at this lamb. We've cooked the lamb the way country people like it. Well cooked. None of this rare bloody thing. Okay, so come on over. We're going to have some beautiful lamb. We're going to have some amazing vegetable frittata that's gluten free. If you like your lamb gluten free, we can serve it to you in a cup instead of a bread roll. We're going to have some amazing, amazing veal and chicken chipolatas. They're gluten free as well. We're going to have some beautiful, absolutely beautiful banana tiramisu to finish off the day. And if you don't come in here and start walking around, you won't get all the taste. Let me go through them all. Lamb, the beautiful vegetable tart, the beautiful chicken chipolata, the beautiful pastry with savoury danish, the beautiful crayfish that's been done in a little ice cream cone. You can have that gluten-free out of the, the ice cream cone. And of course, finishing off with a fresh banana if you want gluten-free, or unfortunately, not gluten-free, the banana tiramisu. Come and join us, move around, don't stand in one place, and eat everything. <laughs>